Hey, what's up, guys? It's S Van here, and uh, I'm actually joined by Stay Safe here. Yeah, what's up? So yeah, Stay Safe TV. Of course, you guys know Stay Safe from Classic Cast. Uh, he's here this weekend along with Rich, and uh, we've been doing stuff with Asmund Gold, and we'll talk about that actually at the end of the video. But what's more exciting for you guys right now is the fact that we've gotten a little bit of an update about AV and Classic. And I just want to add, this is our third Classic update in the last 19 days. Yes, third That's in 19 days. Picking up the pace. That's a whole lot. So, very good, very exciting. Um, the fact that we're getting news. So let's talk about this a little bit. Kyvax told us in the last update that uh, we're going from four phases to six phases. Kyvax is back and he's given us a little bit of clarification about AV and Classic. Uh, we'll go ahead and read through the post and we'll give you guys our thoughts. <clears throat> this is a subject that's been asked about several times recently and we want to clarify some of the details surrounding it. Like many aspects of the game, Alterac Valley was tuned and adjusted in different ways from patch to patch in 2005 to 2006. 2005 instead of 2004 because AV came out in patch 1.5. First and foremost, we're planning to use the 1.12 version of Alterac Valley. For many parts of the game like this, we're picking an original WoW patch that gives us the most clarity for WoW Classic, and 1.12 is that patch. In Alterac Valley, that puts us before the introduction of reinforcements. It puts us before the re removal of all the commanders and lieutenants. The only win conditions are the killing of Drek'thar'n, Frostwolf Keep, or Vandor Stormpike, and Dunvaldr. It gives us several early improvements to the BG that we're glad to have in place. Early on in AV, there were too many NPCs that were too hard to kill. By 1.12, many had been removed and NPC health was brought down to a reasonable level. Turning in armor scraps is an encouraged, supportive activity by this point. Many capture points, mostly graveyards, had been moved away from their initial placements to gain better balance across the map. Korak the Blood Rager was removed, and killing opposing players no longer drops items like Dwarf Spines, Orc Teeth, or Human Bone Chips. In our content update plan, content plan update, uh, we mentioned that we're still working out exactly how and when PvP elements of Classic will roll out. We'll, up we'll update you on that here very soon. And I think given the fact that we've gotten so many updates in such a short amount of time, oh, yeah. we're, we're probably, we probably are going to get uh, a, an update on that very soon. So, Yeah, they're definitely picking up the pace, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about what this means. They're basically going to go with 1.12 AP. Uh, what this means is, I think most notably, particularly for players who've been playing on private servers, is that there's not going to be landmines placed around the map. One thing that... Uh, actually, this is something that the, the Nostalrius team did, this is something from the Nost core, is they went and they made custom pla placements of the landmines around the map. The Alterac Valley that you played on Nostalrius isn't necessarily, on the Nost core I should say, isn't necessarily uh, the Alterac Valley that was in the game in Vanilla WoW. I remember one of the things, actually whenever I was playing on the private server, one of the things that really stood out to me was the landmines because I, I couldn't remember, I was like, I don't even remember these landmines. Well, they were only there for I think one or two patches. It was, know, it was really, really, really short. Five and they were removed, I think, by 1.7 at the latest. Yeah, so it was only there for a very short period of time. Um, but they went ahead and put them, put them in on Nost and then they put them in custom spots. And uh, we actually talked to Nano about that. And Nano had told us that, uh, just to verify with him to make sure that was right. And he's like, yeah, it was totally custom. Uh, and you can actually go back on, on the Nostalrius Twitter account, and you can see they posted a screenshot of that. Um, so you can go look that up whenever they're like, oh, we put the landmines in. So, pretty cool. Um, pretty cool, I guess, that uh, just a little bit of lore, I guess. Um, something else, let's talk about the fact that there's no race-specific drops for the quest turn-ins. Uh, Stacey, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so in, uh, you know, in early Ultra Valley, if you killed a Torn, you would drop a Torn item. I think mm -hmm. it was like a hoof or something. Mm -hmm. You'd go an Orc, you would drop an Orc, whatever. Human had their own, and Night Elf. Everyone, every race had their own. Right. And uh, you could actually pick these up. You had to go over it. It didn't matter if you actually got the Killing Blow, or even if you tagged them, you'd have to run over, right-click, loot them, and then you'd pick it up. Right. And um, you'd pick them up, bring them back to the Sanctuary or whatever, and you'd turn it in for a rep. Yeah, and I think 20 silver as well. So I remember memory I have is back in the day, people would not contribute to the battleground at all, and they would just run around and try to pick these things up. Because yep. you could make like 25 or 30 gold an hour doing that. People just sitting yep. there and sort of like AFK, mentally AFK, and just go loot and try to make gold in Altrack Valley. Yeah. Well, and you know what else is good, actually, is um, that's something that's cool, I think. I think it is something that's cool. I think it adds flavor, and it adds a way for people to make gold. But uh, in a sense, this could also be a way to kind of counteract botting yeah, definitely. I think it's a definitely. way that you can counter out botting. A lot of times people talk about, well, what, are, what is Blizzard going to do about gold botters and people who sell gold and this and that. In retail, they did the WoW token. And um, 
at this point, I would be so hard pressed to see them, you know, wow token. It's it's even though it hasn't been talked about, I almost think it's something that's so ridiculous that like I I couldn't see them doing it. I agree. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe in a way that this is this is a way that'll kind of help counteract botting as well. Even though it's uh, it's just like too too, it's something that's too mechanically it's it's too mechanically easy of a way. I didn't phrase that right, but I think you guys know what I'm saying. Uh, it's far too mechanically easy to just right click, right click, right click, and then go back to a specific mm -hmm. point to turn in the item. Um, and there are definitely choke points on the map that you would set your, yeah. your bot up. Yeah, a lot yeah. Of people are going to be dying. Right. So you put it like the end of like the field of strife, like the, the exactly. end of the field of strife. Exactly. You'd run there. It'd be so easy to bot it. Yep. Um, so this is something that, in a in a way, is going to counteract botting, which is uh, which could be nice, even though. I, I personally think it's something cool that did add flavor. I, I maybe, I don't know. I, I, that, that's the way that I see it. Um, <clears throat> let's see something else. Um, well, another thing they talk about here is how there were so many NPCs early on, and right. they had a lot of health, and they were very, very powerful. And when I think of that, they mentioned uh, actually Korak the Blood Rager. I remember being an Alliance player. Mm -hmm. If I'm running through Spill to Strife and I aggro Korak, You're dead. I'm dead. <laughs> and you know that, that's just yeah. sort of annoying. Yeah. And, and the, for those of you who don't remember Korak, Korak was the big red uh, forest troll looking guy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, super super strong. And if you aggro him, you're probably dead. Um, yeah, I think they, they, they get rid of him, they're getting rid of uh, a lot of the elite NPCs, or, or basically just like rebalancing it to, to be what the game was at the end. Uh, one thing that they don't talk about here is Ivis and Lakalar. Ivis the Forest Lord, That's right. and Lakalar the Ice Lord. Um, we've, we, we've looked at this before, and they're in, they're in the game in Burning Crusade, and, and even in Wrath, I believe, Even so later. they're still going to be in the game. No one did it though, but yeah, in Vanilla WoW, um... You, you could kill people similar to the other like uh, lootable turnings, um, but these are for Alliance or Storm Crystals and Horde. Mm -hmm. It's another resource. I think it's a, I think blood it's blood or something. Or something right? Yeah, and you you know you pick them off the the bodies of Horde NPCs and also Horde players, and you mm -hmm. go and turn them in, and slowly you accumulate enough to summon these like giant elemental lords, mm -hmm. and uh, they're very powerful, and they slowly walk to the field of strife, or uh, actually that's just where you summon them. So they fight at the field of strife, mm -hmm. and uh, it's like this crazy thing. Yeah. I don't remember it happening a ton. Because it was actually sort of tedious to do it, right? It, it, it's very mm -hmm. tedious to do it, but I remember whenever it would happen, it would be like, oh! Ah! Yeah, <laughs> it's right. actually being summoned. Right. Right. Like, this AV lasted long enough for, for somebody to actually yeah. do this. But, uh, yeah, it was always it was always really cool whenever it happened. Um, so I think that, as far as uh, nostalgia, and as far as, like, memories of Ultraic Valley go, uh, you know, outside of the fact that, you know, you'd have AVs that would last, like, days, literally. Yeah. Uh, I think that the summoning of Ivis and Lockalar are, are two things that really, really uh, stand out to, yeah. to myself. I think that's like when people think of All Truck Valley, Vanilla Wow, Nostalgia, they think of those two guys. We had the Link Falls. I remember I'd wake up in the morning, be getting ready for school, be in All Truck Valley, go to school, come back, join the same All Truck Valley. Right, they, right. They lasted a yeah. very long time. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> So yeah, I mean that, that's that's basically it. I mean this is a uh, this is a relatively small update, but I think there's um, I think there's a little bit of good speculation that we can make here. Especially, I mean it's not really even speculation. They're going to say they're going to update on us, uh, update us on uh, PVP soon. So and this is really the first PVP update that they've given us for uh, for classic. So classic news is coming. I mean it's 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 rolling out. I mean third update in 19 days, like you said. Yeah. Uh, so very very exciting. And uh, you know what else is exciting, actually, and, and we'll talk about the reason why Stay Safe is here. Um, so Stay Safe, Rich Campbell, <laughs> myself, and Asmongold uh, are actually working on. Uh, well, I mean, it's it's pretty much happening at this point. We we, yep. we got a house picked out. We're going to be moving in together uh, here in Austin. So they're here visiting. I think Rich is either asleep or playing Poe right now. I'm, I'm not so sure, <laughs> but uh, but uh, but yeah, we're we're really really excited about that. So we'll have our little uh, our little WoW gaming house. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be set up before Classic, so we'll be ready to go when Classic launches. Yeah, for sure. So that that was kind of the goal is, is we'll be we'll have a place to stay when Classic launches and uh, kind of shut ourselves off from the rest of society. I, I think it's going to be really good. Um, we're we're really really excited about that, and we'll we'll talk about that a little bit more as time comes. But. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think that's it, right? Yeah, I think that's it, yeah. guys. Please follow Stay Safe TV on Twitch and on YouTube. So just look up Stay Safe on YouTube, and um, if you guys like this video, 
I'd appreciate if you subbed. I'd appreciate if you hit the bell. What the bell does, okay, th this hit the bell meme, okay, it's hit the bell, smash that like button. The hit the bell meme, it's real, okay, because a lot of times if you post a non-classic video, or and I've been doing a lot more classic videos lately, but if you post a video that's not classic, what'll happen is uh, you won't even see it. It won't show up in your subscriptions or whatever because of how like YouTube algorithm, weird, weird meme stuff goes. But yeah, if you guys really like my content, if you guys like what you see, Hit the bell. That helps. You get notifications up in your, your YouTube bell thing. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope you guys are excited for WoW Classic. And uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more on Classic Cast next week. No doubt. Yep, for sure. There we go. Thank you guys.